Yo, what is up YouTube? It's been a while. I hope you guys are good. Today, we're going to be looking at some on one photo raw tools in action, the way that you would use them should you, you know, just open up a photo. So you're going to see me in a video lesson today where I open a photo that I took a few years ago, um, or maybe it was a year. It was a year ago, not a few years ago. Anyway, I haven't touched these photos in a long time and I said, you know what, I just want to get back into photo editing. So I grabbed this photo and I went ahead and recorded the screen. Um, today we're going to be looking at masking, we're going to look at some noise reduction, and we're going to look at how you can use local adjustments. But the real key here is learning how to use the mask to your benefit and making very subtle adjustments for your overall aesthetic look. Um, now. If you find this video helpful, please smash the like button, consider subscribing if you haven't already. It just helps this channel uh, and we've been growing over the, over the last month. We've grown uh, quite a bit and I really appreciate those of you who have hit the subscribe button um, and continue to hang out with me and support this channel. So before we dive into the content, I want to let you know that I did mark off each one of the sections in the chapter. So if there's a specific adjustment that you want to look at, be it noise reduction or the color color enhancer uh, or just how I used it. You can use the chapters to skip ahead and use this tutorial uh, kind of as a stepping stone for your own creativity and editing style inside of On One Photo Raw. All right, now what I need from you guys is feedback. If there's something that you specifically would like to see me uh, put together on this channel content wise for on one or Lightroom, please leave it in the comment section below, or you can shoot me an email directly and, you know, kind of explain what it is that you need help with. And I will be more than happy to help you out. So let's dive into the content. Let's see what happens when I go AI auto. Now I took this a little while ago. Let's see what camera it was with Nikon D5200, my trusty Nikon D5200. And we can see there is a lot of noise in this photo. Um, and we're getting that because the shadows are just opened up a ton. Now, I shot this with an ISO of 800, so this should be fairly easy to clean up. Let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the shadows here because the goal with this photo was really to get a nice edgy uh, shot and you can see I had a speed light just off to the camera left. Uh, and you see the highlights that are here. But I was really focusing in on this particular area. So let's see what happened. And you can even see a uh, reflection of the light right there. And then all these other little bokeh balls. And I think I have my 40, yep, I have my 40 millimeter macro lens. Uh, Sadly, I do not have this combination anymore, but whatever, it's okay. Um, so, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and up the structure here. And I don't know, and if anyone knows what the heck you're supposed to do here, please leave me a comment. But um, anytime that I use the develop module version of the details, and I come in here to the noise reduction and I move up the luminance. Uh, actually, today it seems to be doing quite well. I'm going to go ahead and remove that for a second. Yeah, but I really like the noise that I'm getting right here. And it's just softening the photo way too much. Uh, so even if you crank up the detail um let's turn that off and on that's with it off and i really like the character that i get with the noise on here i just really want to clean it up in the shadows and turn back on so i'm not a huge fan of this uh because you can't mask this so i'm gonna just turn that off because i don't feel like dealing with it and i'm going to come over to the effects and the very first thing that I want to do with this particular edit is remove the noise that I have inside of the photo. So we'll go ahead and click on noise reduction. And it already does a little bit of noise reduction. 
Now again, my goal is really inside of these shadow areas and cleaning up what's here on the plant, stuff like that. And then I'm just gonna mask this in. So I'm looking in those areas as I crank my luminance up and looks like those are doing pretty well. I like to move my noise reduction all the way to the uh, far side and then just turn it off and on, see how much noise I'm actually removing from the photo. And in this one, there's still a lot of noise in here and I'm not 100% sure why that is. So I'm going to bring the detail down and this is just really going to uh, smooth out a lot of that. And I'm probably even going to throw a surface blur on this as well. So we'll leave it like so. And then what I'm going to do is click on the noise reduction. And I, or I'm sorry, not the noise, the mask for the noise reduction. And I'm just going to use my brush. Normally I would use one of the uh, little assisting tools, but I'm just going to use my brush. And where it says paint in, I'm going to hit shift to X get to paint out and I'm just gonna go right over this section that I really want that noise to remain okay so because I think it just adds a little bit of character and texture and as I'm seeing uh, yep got my feather up to a hundred so what I'm what I'm noticing is a transition challenge so I'm just going to fix that with a little bit of uh, opacity reduction for the overall noise reduction layer. And that just gives a nice gradual reduction. And we'll turn this off and on so we can see what it's doing. And we can see it's really helping smooth out this entire image. Now, and my dog is just making all kinds of noise. So let me let him out. So I'm going to add a blur now, and this one is not going to be the Gaussian. I'm actually going to click on the drop down and click surface blur. And this really helps with reducing noise. So if you ever run into an issue with noise and the noise reduction tools, they're just not cutting it for you. Try a surface blur. Now, the amount and the threshold, you know, you really got to play with. And if you look at it, and I'm looking at the overall image, right? Uh, my goal here, because I already have a noise reduction, I don't want a whole lot of blur uh, over the rest of the image. Now, uh, the cool thing about On One is I have this mask here. Not that it's a great mask, by the way, uh, but I can just go ahead and smash copy and then come over to my blur and be it as it may, I'm just going to paste in this very terrible uh, mask, if you will, that, you know, it, it works. So let me go ahead and hit the blur on, or this is with it off, I'm sorry. And if we turn it back on, you'll see that some of the, uh, the overall image is just softer in the background with more... Uh, punchy edginess in the foreground. Now, this picture to me is a little dull, so I want to deal with the colors. Now that I have the quality uh, color that I'm looking for, and I know that I'm not going to be adding this in on any of that additional noise, I'm going to go with a color enhancer. And I'm going to click on my greens. Um, and actually, I think I'm going to boost the vibrance here globally uh, because I do want this over the entire image. Uh, now, these greens are way too green, so I'm going to desaturate those here in a second. Uh, just those greens. Um, and then leave the rest of the image alone. So, what I want to deal with is... You know what? Let's just go ahead and deal with the saturation issue over here. So I don't need those as vibrant, right? And we're just going to bring down the saturation in the greens. 
And I think that's good because I want that to be more muted so I can really focus in on this water drop. So now that I have that, I need to put a mask over it. I'm gonna go ahead and invert this mask so that way none of it is showing. And then with, and then I'm gonna go ahead and change my uh, painting mode to paint in. And I'm just going to paint 100% opacity right over these, in my mind, overly saturated green leaves. So that way I have a less saturated uh, plant here. And that's pretty good. Now I need a new filter and I'm gonna go with another color enhancer. This time I'm going to boost the saturation in this area uh, so I'm just going to jump up the saturation quite a bit, right? Because I really, really, and then maybe even the vibrance. And then I will click on my mask, invert, and I'm going to paint this in on this leaf or on this uh, branch, whatever it is. But what I want to do is move my flow down to maybe about 60 Two, I guess is what I'm going to go with and I'm on my opacity down to 50 all right this just helps me control how I'm doing this feather at 100 and I'm just gonna brush right over the aloe vera plant here and as you can see that brings in a little bit more life to the plant uh, and now Next thing that I'm going to do is add in some dynamic contrast. Now, this really makes those little uh, texture bubbles inside of this water drop really, really glisten. But I don't need it. Like if you look in the back here, and I don't know how the compression on YouTube is, but if you look in the back of the plant here, it just does not look good. So again, I'm going to invert this. And I'm only going to bring that dynamic contrast in right here on this leaf, okay? And I'm going to just paint over it ever so slowly and slightly. Because, you know, we don't, we don't need to do a whole lot here. We just have to get, I just want to draw some attention to that area right now we can work on how this is because this is just default settings right so i'm going to increase the small uh contrast and maybe even increase the medium yeah that's that's really grunging it up for me a little bit there okay um all right now what i want to do is really bring in some uh or actually while we're working on it i want to increase the highlights that are painted over on this and that's really going to bring out those water drops uh, and maybe even bring down the blacks now i am going to come back to my mask and we're going to do, I'm going to make an adjustment. So the darker colors, I don't really need to add this to. And yeah, there we go. Now it's really starting to pop, right? All the attention is really starting to go right here to this little water drop. Okay, so. These are all the effects that we have so far. Next thing that I want to do is bring out the texture. So let's see. Let's try something else. Let's go ahead and go with a curves adjustment. And I'm really just looking at this area what I want to do is boost or 
Yeah, pull away on those mid-tones. Uh, yeah, maybe I will just boost it slightly. And again, we're going to invert the mask. And with my brush, I am going to paint just right here. There we go. And now, the last thing that I'm going to do is go to my local adjustments. And I'm going to click on the mask. Come over here and select my masking tool. Select the masking bug. And it looks like I already have the vignette set. So I'm just going to click one time. I'm going to invert this. And it's going to look terrible here for a second. And then I will come over here and we're just going to boost the, uh, the exposure. Now, let me try something else out. Let's invert that. And we'll just dim the lights on everything. And I'll pull that out. Now I can come back over here to the develop tab and just boost the exposure a little bit of everything. We're starting to see some of that noise, but I'm okay with that because I think it adds check texture. So and then we'll come back over here to the local adjustment. We'll bring down the uh, exposure. Let's bring down the blacks everywhere else so we're really getting that dramatic look and we'll even bring down the shadows so there you have it so hey there you go guys i hope this content was extremely helpful for you if it was smash that like button and tell me what was your favorite tool or technique uh how do you like to use masking just you know leave a comment in the comment section below let me know what you're thinking uh, I do read all the comments and I respond to all of them. So it's not a, uh, a it, it, your comment does not fall on deaf ears. All right. Now, again, your feedback will greatly help this channel continue to grow and progress. So please let me know what it is that you would like to see. And if it's content I can create, I absolutely will create it because uh, I want to give back to the photography community for all the people who have taught me how to use uh, Lightroom and on one photo raw right here on YouTube or in person. So I just want to give back to the community and, and see, you know, exactly where we are uh, and, you know, just share the love. And lastly, if you're in the podcast, I do have the free will photos podcast. A link to that uh, show is in the description box below. So, you know, if you're in the podcast, go ahead and check it out. If you're not, maybe, you know, you'll like the podcast, check it out. Hang out with your boy. So until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace out.